Hi, Hiram here. I've had a number of people asking me if I've played around with capillary action stoves. Uh, I played with them somewhat, but I don't think I ever did a video on it. So I thought maybe I'd try to explain a little bit here and show you one that I've done up. Now capillary action, if you look up the scientific term for it, uh, capillary action, sometimes referred to as wicking, is where liquids tend to rise or get depressed in uh, tubes of small diameter. The capillary action is caused by adhesion to the, of the liquid to, the, to a surface. Maybe you remember back in grade school, I think it was, where they took a stalk of celery and stuck it down in a little jar of blue liquid ink or something, and after a couple of days, the ink would come up in the veins of the stalk, that's capillary action. Another way you can look at it is if you have two, let's say, glass tubes and you set them down in a, in a, a reddish water, let's say, you stick a, a wide tube in there, you'll get capillary action kind of like this. This is a little exaggerated. But the water gets pulled up the side and you get that little thing. That's where you have problems sometimes when you're measuring, let's say, alcohol for the stoves and stuff. You try to get it accurate each time. It's hard to see it in the uh, bottle. That's why I use something like this. This cuts down on it somewhat or do it by weight. But anyway, on a wide tube you might get it like that. But on a narrow tube with the same liquid, it could draw it up like that. That much of a difference in the heights. So this is what we're doing with a capillary action stove. We're making little tubes, let's say, that pull the alcohol up closer to the surface so that it'll vaporize and you can burn it in your stove. Usually capillary action stoves are very easy to make and if you have the tools they're extremely easy to make. Now this is just one that I knocked together some time ago. All it was was cans. I saved these soda cans. They're the small 7.5 fluid ounce just cut it into two pieces like so. I'll give you the sizes of this one down below. This is only about uh, what was it? 1.6 inches tall or about 40 millimeter tall. I wanted a short one. There's all kinds of ways for cutting the cans. You can see them anywhere but all I do is I use a side cutter to just cut off the top so that you have a nice edge there just like so that way it gives you a reinforced top here then I cut it in half and you trim it down to the sizes you want so now you have a, t a bottom oops getting away you have a bottom and a top the next thing I do is I use the tool <coughs> excuse me called a downspout crimper you use these if you're playing with downspouting where you want to put one piece inside another. It makes a nice little um, crimp, I guess you'd call it. Just stick it in like this. I don't know if you can see that. See that it makes a nice crimp. So I just go along. I don't think there's any formula to how many you put on here. You just kind of stick them in. The other thing I meant, it depends on how you cut your your cans, you can either use the scissors or in my case I have a Dremel tool set up that I can use. But with my Dremel then I end up having to sand down these edges so that they're not all burred up. But I think you can see that how the crimping makes these and each one of these will be a little jet. So now that it's crimped this has been made a little bit smaller and usually this will fit right in just like so. See that? Just that's, I bought this originally when I was working with the soda can stoves. It was easier than trying to finagle to get the thing in. But you just push it down to where the jets are still just above the edge of the bottom of the can. Now there's one other thing that I add to this. <clears throat> because of this good top, if you have a good pot on here, it would seal it off. And the pressure would tend to squirt the alcohol out through the jets. So you either take a, a very small drill, or in my case, I have the tools. It's great when you have the tools. I have a little hole puncher here that punches like a sixteenth of an inch 
hole and I just do that on this I punch in four of them on this top edge that way when your pots on here and the pressure builds up it'll just stick it'll just shoot the vapor out through here instead of the alcohol out through the jets so that took a little bit longer than I met, planned on it but let me get some water prepped I'll get some alcohol in here and we'll do a little test be right back okay I've got two cups of water prepped in the old Boy Scout pot going with a wide pot the diameter on this is what about two and a quarter inches 57.3 millimeters so it's you, I don't know how well it'll work on a small pot one fluid ounce of methanol in here 30 milliliters let's go ahead and light this so it's burning on the inside there go the jets already there's the two cups of water setting at 60 degrees and let's see where this goes we're now two minutes into the test the temperature is up to 112 degrees Fahrenheit doing pretty good I think you can see I have so many oops getting a little closer have so many jets there that they just kind of all blend together but a nice flame going up and pretty much covering the whole bottom of this pot um, <clears throat> I think if I remember right I used I tried this out in the winter and it didn't do so hot in the cold especially when you know out in the cold and put a cold pot of water on there so I kinda like just set it aside but you can see in the summer it works pretty darn good the temperature room temperature is 71 degrees uh, 21.6 degrees centigrade humidity 48 it's sunny and bright outside no clouds in the sky so it's working pretty good here but let's see where how long it takes to get to boiling there we have 210 211 come on 212 and 641 okay so that was the two cups starting at 60 degrees came to a boil in 6 minutes 41 seconds now let's see how long it takes for a run out Okay, there we're going, going, gone. Let's say at 10:39. Cool. So that was two cups of water starting at 60 degrees, came to a boil in six minutes 41 seconds, and then ran out at 10 minutes 39. Not the fastest, but not bad using on the uh, Boy Scout pot so let me just shut this off now the thing is when I made this last winter uh, I don't think I had any real rhyme or reason as to why I made it this tall I think the distance between the jets to the bottom of the pot should have been a little bit more yeah this is only about a half an inch I think I could have used a taller top piece and bring the pot up a little bit. When these jets are coming out, they're flaring out right away. So the uh, the inner part of the pot that's sitting on here isn't getting much flames here. They're getting it out further. It was a nice looking flame, but it was kind of shooting out. Uh, I could try another test. Now you want to keep the bottom piece large enough that you can hold however much fuel you want this is the part that's going to hold the fuel the top part is just for the holding the pot up so you could make this taller but you don't have to play around with this that way when you're using that crimping tool on the bottom you'll still get the jets here now there are other ways to make the crimps you could use a knife or something and just put crimps in here on your hand or on a piece of something soft but uh, I like using the tools so that's the first test on this. This is going to be my uh, CS or CAS stove, capillary action stove. I don't know what other people have called it, but it's just what I'm going to use for a name on it. But that's the first test. Two cups of water, 60 degrees, come to a boil in 6 minutes 41 seconds and ran out in 1039.
on one fluid ounce 30 milliliters of methanol. So I hope that helps those that asked for this. If you want more tests, just let me know. Um, I thank you for watching. I look forward to your input, questions, remarks, helpful suggestions. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now.